Hello and welcome back. In today's video is to answer a nice simple question. Should Synology and QNAP be worried about companies like these? These are new upcoming NAS solutions from smaller known brands, big and small, there is a sliding scale there, that are rolling out their own NAS solutions on crowdfunding. We're talking about things like the LinkStation N1 from uh, Link Plus. We're talking about the Zimmer Cube from Ice Whale. And of course, we're talking about the NAS Sync series from Ugri. Now, there are definitely, as mentioned, scales when it comes to the size of the brands behind these products, but there is no denying that the last one and a half to two years has seen an extraordinary movement from brands to enter the NAS industry, the private server market of users that are trying to look at cloud service and going, how much? And then moving over to their own services. And arguably, two of the biggest players in that market are these guys, Synology and QNAP. Should they be worried? Should they be counting this? Should they be looking at these guys like young upstarts that are going to run out of steam? Or should they be reactive to this? Well, I think we have to look at this in some different ways. Let's actually break down to probably the thing that these brands here would care about the most. And let's be honest, the money. Now, when it comes to the old money, Synology and QNAP are worth about 350 to about $450 million each. It's very hard to pin down numbers online. So there's variable figures for numerous websites, and they have got a whole fully featured portfolio of solutions. Indeed, QNAP is actually uh, owned by another company, IEI. There might be a partnership thing, an ownership, a subsidiary. I'm not 100% certain on that. Now, these solutions here come from brands that either already existed outside of NAS or are existing and starting starting up at the same time as their solutions. Again, we've got the Zimmer Cube, we've got the LinkStation N1, and we've got the Ugreen series of devices. Now, if we actually talk Turkey, and we talk about the numbers, about why one of the reasons Synology QNAP might be worried is just how much money has been pumped into these solutions by the public. The uh, Zimmer Cube uh, managed to uh, raise just shy of a million pounds during its crowdfunding. It was 945,000 pounds during initial crowdfunding, and that was 1,200 152 units during that time. Link Station, uh, considerably less, 367 units via Indiegogo, raising just shy of £80,000. But the big one uh, was Ugreen there, an established brand, uh, 12 to 14 years in the industry of tech or peripherals and accessories. And they, at the time of writing, because their campaign is still going, on the 9th of April so far, time of recording this, is just over £4 million. 10,360 orders. That equates to um, just over £5 million, pounds, 5 million and 95,000. And in dollars, that comes to $4 million, $6,446,134. That equates to quite a lot of units. Now, the reason I bring it up is if we look at the Synology or QNAP portfolio of devices, they've got devices that are lower as 100, 200 nicker, and they've got other ones that are worth thousands. But I would argue the middle ground is going to be the likes of the 923 Plus, the TS464, that sort of thing. And these units retail for about $550 to $600. That means that the 6.4 million that has been uh, uh, garnered by these solutions here equates to approximately 11,720 units from these. If we look at that $550, dollar price tag there. Now, that is something I think Synology and QNAP would probably notice. There's only a finite amount of money in the market. There's the audience for people that want servers is not infinite. It is very much finite. Look at my subscribers if you want to know more about that. But there's still no denying that 11,720 units worth of buying power leaves a mark when your big gunner to contenders there at the top have suddenly lost somewhere between 12,000 potential purchases across the marketplace there. Now, again, that ripples later as well, because those are users that may not buy into this ecosystem later. They don't buy the accessories. They don't buy the bells and whistles on top. They don't buy the licenses as well. And they're not utilizing that money. These brands don't get that money to reinvest into their platform. So I would argue, even if the other points on this list are things that Synology and QNAP are probably less worried about. I would argue financially, Synology and QNAP and indeed other brands such as Asus Store and TerraMaster here have definitely noticed this sudden gear shift. If 
Synology or QNAP actually decided to flat out engage with an audience to say reasons not to buy this, probably one of the biggest hit points they will go for there for the jugular is going to be about support. Synology's uh, DSM and QNAP's QTS and QUTS platforms generally, when you look at the product status page, are supported for around 10 years. It's eight to 10, sometimes slightly longer for the enterprise systems. But when you look at the hardware releases and the latest software that they support up to, you generally find that the software is supported for about 10 years of operational support. That means all the apps will still work, all the add-ons, all the security and firmware and fully featured updates are all rolled out. So when you're buying a device for say, 550 nicker yeah it's got a two three or even five year warranty in some cases but it's that software support long term and all of the client tools and applications that they almost certainly will say that's why you got to go with us now um, on the contrary when you look at the software from these guys there is no denying that in the majority of cases this software is still in its infancy in the majority of cases now we'll come to the link station in a moment but say, for example, Casa OS and Zimmer OS. Now, they've been around for quite a few years, ever since the Zimmer Blade uh, and the uh, Zimmer Board came into fruition. However, there's no denying that Zimmer OS only relatively recently added RAID support. That gives you some idea of how immature their software is compared to that of DSM and QTS. And these guys will definitely highlight that, rightly so, too. Their software is still very much in beta with a lot of its features. And although things are coming together, there's still not a lot of the client applications for mobile and desktop devices that you see on this platform here. Again, a lot of their software on the Zimmer platform is a lot more containerized with a beautiful little flourish there on top. Now, the Ugreen platform is a little bit more fully featured with UGOS already arriving with a mobile application that, you know, beta testers can work with. And the software itself, although being in beta, does seem very, very usable and comparable to a number of softwares from the likes of QNAP, Synology, TerraMaster and Acer Store. But it's still in beta. It still lacks a lot of those killer app features, such as, again, right once read many, two-factor authentication, those quality of life add-ons, iSCSI LUNs and targets, we've talked about it before, that mean that the likes of Synology and QNAP have still got enough moral high ground, at least in terms of software and support, to say... When you buy with us, you're not just getting hardware, you're getting a promise and you're getting support and they will lean heavily into that. Which brings us back to the Link Station. Because Link Station took the blue pill. They went a completely different way. They rolled in an unraid license. That's because although they know they don't have a mature software that they can install on there, they can stick unraid or true NAS on there in some cases if you want to do it yourself. And the result is then you're using open source quite extensively used and bench tested software in the market true nas uh, originally free nas and other naming strategies have existed older than unraid but still the under uh, the argument for a more supported and more uh, evolved and you know trusted platform kind of gets watered down by these guys once you know that these systems can all run true nas and unraid as well as including some licenses and while all this is going on you've got software being developed even now for NAS systems, you've got your likes of the Open Media Vault, and you can use things like Proxmox to run multiple OSs. Indeed, some of the killer features and applications can run in when they're only containerized environment, as we've already discussed. And then you've got developing um, NAS operating systems, such as the one that has been backed, I think, for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars by uh, Linus o uh, LTT or uh, Linus over LTT, that is backed uh, still in development. Um, apparently easy to use NAS software platform. More software is arriving, and yes, that will still be an immature platform compared to the rest of them, but even if Synology and QNAP are sitting there on their laurels going, well, we can still play the support card, we can play the maturity card, you know, 20 years in the biz, nonetheless, I do think that argument is going to come to more and more scrutiny as time wears on. Which brings us to what I would argue is going to be the killer argument more than any of the others that I've discussed thus far. And that is going to be support and warranty. Let's be honest, probably ever so slightly less for home users, but definitely your business and your middle ground users, prosumer and you know more advanced home labbers, 
you know, Synology and QNAP, no, you've got that warranty I mentioned earlier on, but they've got global support offices. I think Synology have got six global offices, two in the US, others in different regions, and QNAP have got something like 12 or 13 regional offices for technical support, for sales support, and ultimately to support their product. And if you're a business user, that means a lot. You want a contact number. You want a contact email. You want support. Now, region to regions, you look online, give varying different accounts of the level of that support. So if you are in some regions, you actually get better support than others by the look of things on paper, at least in terms of success rate. But it is just simply not something the other brands provide. A lot of the time, because they have rolled out the gate on Kickstarter, Indiegogo, it results in that they don't have the support infrastructure in place. Forget global support structure. You can look at the Ugreen systems that are arriving on Kickstarter, again, still happening right now. They're only available in the UK and Germany to actually pro for product fulfillment. No doubt that'll change when the product hits main retail. But that regional availability is certainly going to make a user, such as someone in the UK, hello, cup of tea, cup of tea, wondering... I want to know that they're going to support me in that product. And, you know, it sowed to the seeds of doubt. Then you look at things like the Zimmer Cube. There's a lot more global availability. But there's still no avoiding that Ice Whale does not have the global presence and contact number and email contact support that Synology and QNAP provide for one degree or another. And even if you're prepared to, you know, sack that all off and go for a system that arrives with a third-party NAS OS like Unraid or install it yourself, true nas and unraid support is mostly community based you know things like unraid and true nas actually do have now paid support lines you can utilize shout out to ed rawlins over at space invader one supporting unraid there um, as a, a paid consultation there but still nonetheless it's not going to be as straightforward and as seamless as it appears on Synology and QNAP. And I think if these guys ever did feel threatened and if they were going to kick up some noise, that would be the main way they would highlight it. It would say, if you've got a problem with your QNAP and you're based in the UK, contact QNAP UK. Here's the phone number. And it's just simply not something you can get from this. And finally, tacking this here on the end, because although it's a big hurdle for a lot of users and something that Synology and QNAP would probably should be worried about, I think it's something they're the least worried about of any of it. And it's simply the cost to the end user. I know we already talked about how much was invested and how much that translates into individual units, but I just can't see a world where Synology and QNAP drop their prices in response to this. It's just not going to happen because they know that when you buy a DS1522 Plus or a QNAP TS464, if you pay five, 600 nicker for that, that's not all for the hardware. That is to cover the software, it's to cover the support, the logistics, the manufacturing. There's a multifaceted diagram there, um, but it's what keeps the wheels turning. Where a lot of these devices, you know, I'm not going to say they're sold as loss leaders. Some of them, I would argue, with 40% off early pricing on the Ugreen is certainly a move to get, you know, more bums on seats. But arguably... These guys are not going to try and engage with these guys in a price war level because they are aware just how much of every single pound goes towards the hardware and goes towards everything else. I'm not saying that as a means to justify the price tags that Synology and QNAP have had on some of their solutions because arguably they have been a bit high, particularly, hello, global economic crisis. But there's no denying that I just can't see a world where these guys will aggressively counter these guys with the use of lowering their prices. They know what they are pricing. They're not going to screw up that wonderful tiering system they've spent all their years, those years developing for themselves. These guys, they have to compete on that price level. They've got to go street level, but it's just something they're not going to engage in. Bottom line, do I think these guys are threatened by these guys? I don't think they are. I think they should be aware of them and definitely watch them and maybe you know, filter out the portfolio, maybe chuck something a bit comparable. But honestly, I just don't think they are that worried by these brands right now at the moment. The margins of error and that thin, thin profit margin these brands have had to roll out on, I think is what allows Synology and QNAP to sit back and go, yeah, we'll deal with them if they don't fall over. Now, there is a, ca a caveat to that. I think they should be keeping an eye on Ugreen there. The reason being, Ugreen, unlike upstart companies, comparable upstarts, have been around for 12 to 14 years. There is a supply chain. There is 
funding there in the back end and a brand name people are aware of. Certainly isn't, well, at least within NAS, as well known as Kinopal Synology, but these guys should at least be looking at how that story pans out, because I think there is something to be learned from that. And when they are rocking out solutions that are full flash, when they are rocking out pure Gen 4 systems, and they are rocking out the CPUs and the hardware architecture that people are actually demanding in the home and prosumer sector, there is simply no denying that it filters upwards to a lot of business users going, and particularly content creators, looking down and going, Oh, that looks quite nice. And it's when you look at the Gen 3, the Gen 4, the Gen 5, and as these brands roll into something bigger, do Salon Gen QNAP react to early doors, or do they wait until they become a problem? That's up to them. But bottom line, I just don't simply, I simply don't think they are worried about these guys yet. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Do you think they should be worried? Maybe they are worried. Maybe you work from Salon Gen QNAP and you want to let us know. If you've got any more questions about this or want to talk about this in the comments, I want to talk to you guys about this in the comments. Head down there and let's have a chat. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.